The topic of today is about uh, meditation in daily life. And it's a series of talk about uh, how to uh, re renew your life. How to recharge yourself. So I summarize, we talk about prana. I mean, how you need to have more prana. You need to have um, positive thinking. That's the second talk. Understand what is thought, what is the relationship between thought and prana. And then the third talk was about uh, how to be flexible, adaptable, how to work with your ego, how to pay attention to, to the subconscious. And then yesterday we talked about detachment, how not to be uh, pulled down through our attachment. And uh, so that you'll be able to adapt, adapt and change by being detached. Today we'll talk about meditation the different ways how you can uh, introduce meditation in your daily life. So, there are different definitions of meditation. But one of the definition, the classical way is the meditation according to Patanjali. And we have our Patanjali sitting here, Los Angeles Center. He received such a beautiful name, Patanjali. That means, uh, what is it to say, Arundi? That means that the knowledge is already there. It falls down in your hands. The knowledge is already there. So, according to Patanjali, then a meditation is at the seventh rung. I mean, st seventh step of the eight steps ladder of yoga, of Raja Yoga system. That means you have to prepare yourself in order for you to be able to be still. So the yamas and the yamas are the two first. That means the, the proper behavior that would not bring about any kind of reaction. That bring about peace. So if we, because um, anything that happened It is uh, due to our karma from past. And if we're going to react to our karma, then it makes the tendency or the thought to be stronger. And um, it would uh, put us more deeper into the state of um, unhappiness, restlessness, worry. So that's why yoga scheme, a way, is how to free us from our past tendencies. And uh, Patanjali gave us a few points, a few guidelines, how to do this. We call yamas and niyamas. Yamas is the, the not to do, the restriction. If you want your mind to be peaceful, it's better that you adopted this way of behavior. If you want to be free from karma and from disturbances and from 
creating new vrittis in the mind, new thoughts in the mind, it's better that you follow these guidelines. So the first guideline is ahimsa. Ahimsa means non-violence or in other words, try to work around your desire and your expectation so that you don't get uh, angry. Because anger comes from expectation unfulfilled. So if you can be flexible enough to work around your expectation, then you will be able to be a peaceful person and you would be avoiding uh, anger and violence. Okay, so it's all about, it's all about you. It's not about whatever happened and whatever people's behavior. It's about you. What do you expect? How you interpret that situation? So you can change. You can uh, switch to ahimsa. Means you have to learn how to manage your your desire, your ego, your expectation. You have to enhance size a lot. You can also learn how to be compassionate, to understand somebody from where they are, to understand the situation that can be quite complex sometimes. And you have to come up with the most subject kind of uh, response. And you have to work against your ego because your ego has its tendencies and you want to reproduce its tendencies. You want to feel strong. But uh, according to yoga, we are not strong when we reproduce our tendency. The moment we say, I, I am like this, because I always been like this. <laughs> so we reinforce our tendency and our desire and our expectation, and we create more instances of, uh, of frustration, of reaction, of Ahimsa. So Ahimsa imply that you have to be non-egoistic, no expectation, no attachment like we talked yesterday, no attachment to result, no attachment to your own thoughts, to your own habits to be quite uh, open and to be quite uh, uh, yeah, flexible, accepting, empty. Empty doesn't mean empty, but open. Yeah? To be quite open. Every moment is unique. So to uh, be humble, that's part also of the practice of Ahimsa. So don't think that you know. To remove the ego. So, so that's a number one. So in daily life, you have to see this situation where your ego will come up. 
I know, I know better than you. I like you to do this way, that way. So you have to be training yourself to be very careful. So I learned a few ways in daily life to not to hurt somebody's ego. Do you mind? You see, these words like this. Do you mind do this? Instead of say, do this. You, of course, you can say, do this, and you are in a position maybe of authority. Please, you add the word please. And then you explain. Yeah, I found people there to be very short. <laughs> what means short? They don't uh, communicate very well. Why you don't communicate very well? Because you think that people should know or should think of things the way how you see it. But people don't. They are completely different mindset. What you expect from them can be like talking Chinese. They have no understanding of that. And then you assume that they have to understand that. And you just say a few words because that's what your assumption. And you expect them to understand and you get upset if they don't understand. Or resentment. Or you make a face. So in daily life, it's good to practice this thing, to be humble, to be communicative, to know that you don't know the truth about anybody or anything. And to talk to the person as you talk to God. And that is difficult to practice. Yeah. So the teachings say, behave with people like you see your husband, your wife, your friend, your boss, like God. How do you practice this thing? Okay. That means you have to, to know that you don't know. You cannot assume that you know. You not carry, you cannot carry yourself around and think that is the, the truth and the reality is in me. You should understand me. You see, instead of carry yourself around and know that you don't understand a thing about anything. God knows, but not you know. So like I said, don't take yourself too seriously. And uh, be humble. And be learning how to communicate. So I don't type very quickly. I type very slow. I just have few two finger. I don't know how to type. I cannot see very well. Also, I'm almost blind <laughs> because I don't wear my glasses and I use my little cell phone as my computer. So it took me a long time to type anything, to communicate. And people and I receive tons of email. I'm being attacked by email of people. So it takes me a long time to answer email. You know, typing and and sometimes I have to type in Vietnamese and different keyboard and oh, accent and all these things. But I make a point. I'm not talking about me here. I'm talking about the concrete thing how you can do it. Meditation in daily life. These are called um, Bhakti Yoga meditation, but you can say also some form of Raja Yoga meditation because you have to be very focused. To be very careful when you answer an email, answer a request, and to be communicating. That means you have to talk about the circumstances, the before that email, 
and explain to people, you know, the after, and then you have to use the right kind of feeling that you can add to the, to the communication and you have to understand the person, you know, where they come from and who are you at this time present. And then you try to make that communication unique at that time. And I spent many, many, many years of my life, every email, or no, that time there was no email. It was a type letter with a typewriter. <laughs> and um, I was secretary in the ashram. I had to write the correspondence for the Swamiji and so, and there was a only like electric typewriter with a carbon paper. So I had to spend a lot of time and I didn't write very well English at that time um, to, to try to imagine in my mind these people that write and then try to imagine their mindset and try to write a letter corresponding to what I imagine they to be and then take from the book called Elixir Divine, which is the book of uh, Swami Shivananda of quotes. And then have, depending on what I feel about the person, I have to choose the proper quote to put at the end of the letter for a person. So it's like a full meal, but you cook for a full meal <laughs> when you answer an email. You know, there's a beginning that, how do you say that, the pre, how do you say that? Yeah. Pre uh, appetizer, <laughs> three course meal, and then the main thing, the main course, and the dessert at the end, and the whole thing. So the whole, and, and took me a lot of time. You imagine I don't speak English, I don't type very well, and there was no, the whole thing. But, that is my, if you ask me, what did I learn? What did I learn? How did I learn? What is my spiritual path? I say like this, because I was secretary for many years. I say one letter at a time. That's how I learn. I imagine a person, I use a proper quote. I think about it. I meditate about the person that I write the letter to. Yeah, and people don't even, I write letter to the Swamis somebody else signing, not me. Yeah, so I have to imagine also that I write a letter for Swamiji or for the other senior Swami. So then uh, I have to tune my mind a lot into higher vibration wavelength in order for me to be able to address the person. So that was my way of meditation in action or doing karma yoga, or writing letters, or to tune yourself into the mind of two different people and put yourself become the instrument of communication between two different people, the Swami and the person that writes or the ashram. You see? So it's not just like, you know, fact or uh, black and white what do you want and this and we don't have this we have that and then this and that it's just not just only business it's a spiritual communication it's my meditation and this is the truth that's how i grow in uh, in awareness yeah i i must have write, written so many letters and um I learned something also from Swami Vishnu Devanji because I had to bring correspondence to him to, uh, and then he would normally indicate, you know, what kind of, uh, uh, how do I write, and what he wants. So the person I tell you the story, the person that came before me was a man, Kama Yogi, maybe 40, 50 years old. And one day he come back from that correspond. He's a new Kama Yogi. He come back from that 
correspondent session with Swami Vishnu Devanji, and he was so upset. And he said, I'm not going to work for this man. And then he thumbed out and he left the ashram. <laughs> so I was just a new Kama Yogi that come. And uh, they <laughs> and they say, okay, I, I will take the job. Well, I got scared. <laughs> what is it? What happened there? You know. So then I went and I realized what happened. See, Swamiji mind is extremely fast, extremely fast. And if he functions in a different level than you are, and then usually our mistake, our first mistake is we always think that people have to function on the same level that you are, but they are not, you see? So I learned that he, he doesn't function the way how I think and how I function. We call it in the yoga, we call it, he functions in a super conscious level, not the conscious level, not the subconscious level that we are. Normally we function on subconscious level, hardly we function on the conscious level, and we have no clue of what is a super conscious level. So I gave him the letters. I say, Swamiji, this person say this, I read the letter. And that time was, uh, you know, the people write in this aerogram. That was about 37 years ago or something. And then Swamiji took the letter and he do like this. Where is it? Napkin here. Napkin. I need a napkin. Yeah. Give me a box of napkin. So anyway, he took the paper and he does like this. That's it. That's his reply. And you are, oh my God, how do I write a letter? Okay, like this, like this. So <laughs> he didn't say anything. And then at that time, I remember, you know, my mind is like, I don't know how, but it was maybe it's a, uh, something must, I must have known it before. June, 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 higher, higher. So it's like this. What is it, Swamiji? Mean? What is what's happening here? What did he say? Yeah. And then, um, so I realize that uh, he communicate with the person by touching the letter. He already got the vibration of the person, putting to his forehead, which is his mind. Yeah, that's how he pray for the person. He already communicate the answer to the person in the psychic world. That's what happened. And that's it. But understand that the person would not receive a letter like this. They, 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 they were not able to. They would not be able to receive that Swamiji already pray for them and have sent them letter, uh, thoughts. So I have to be the instrument to do this. <laughs> so I have to, you know, write the letter. Dear Om Namah Shivaya, dear so and so, you know, greetings from the ashram. And then Swamiji said that, you know, continue your practice. Is it what Swamiji would say? He would say, continue your practice. Because only during the practice that you can solve all your problems. You know, not uh, not by chit chatting. Um, she encourage you to practice and pray for your health and welfare, and so on and so on. And then a little quote of Shivananda. So that's what it is. So the other man that was upset, he expected Swamiji had to sit there, tune into him, which is tuned down to him and read the letter, dictating and wait for him to write, finish writing the words and dictating the letter. And then when he finished, write another sentence. I mean, Swamiji would have to serve him. 
instead of him serving Swamiji and the whole world me, because he's serving the whole world. Therefore, um, there's no time to wait, right? Because it's, it's, it's fast. So he has to serve the world with the thoughts. And you are the instrument of it, so you have to do it. You have to. So I learned, this is a, I was very new karma yogi, new yogi, had to learn how to tune and change wavelength of your thoughts. Okay? Imagine, tune, change quickly and get it. Okay? And then you have to tune down to the level of somebody and then to express the way how, how they would understand. Okay? Because you can feel in a letter, in the words of somebody, <coughs> you can feel how much emotional they are, you know, how much uh, in crisis they are, how much uh, logical mind they are, and you have to learn to match your answer to them. And that's how my training is in daily life. And sometimes I'm wrong. So there's a side story, but I tell you another story. You, know, you expect that you have a guru or teacher, then he will sit there and babysit you. But it's not like that at all. Swamiji live his life and you want to serve him because you want to learn something fine and good. So you have to serve him and then you will learn in the, on the battlefield. You know, he's not a babysitter. He's the one that is living his life and serving the world. And you are the one that have to, the, you are the student, so you have to learn. So one day he was um, um, he was uh, trying to teach me accountancy because uh, you know all my life I never really liked accountancy, mathematics, and money. I was uh, quite a political person before. I thought I understand that. Money is a thing that creates a lot of problem in this world. So I never really like money. And uh, I'm kind of artistic kind of mind. So I don't like mathematics, never like mathematics. I never like counting and counting money. Accountancy is not my thing. And then I come to the ashram and I got as karma yoga accountancy job. Well, at that time, there's no software and you have to do everything calculating by hand. You know, this big register and you have to add everything. And Swamiji said, it's not our money. So you have to be very careful. You know, it's our money. It's all one thing, but this is the public money. So he will not allow like a 50 cents difference. Okay. If you add the thing. So I had to spend time to to add it, the number, you know, and then you you do two times, you, you have to check it and it never come right for me. The number just keep dancing and changing. <laughs> so I spent a lot number of hours and try to make the book fit, you know, and you copy from this column to that column and then you try again and it doesn't work, it ne never work. So I spent hours and night uh, you know, time try to try to make the numbers work. So Swamiji must have known that I have some difficulty. So he called me and another staff to his house to give us an accountancy lesson. So the accountancy lesson was goes like this. So I said, "Wow." You know, Swamiji is going to give me an accountancy lesson. So the master is going to teach me. I don't know how huh? to teach accountancy, but okay. So you are a little bit impressed already, you know, what will happen. And he goes and he says like this. If I'm going to give $10 to 
to this person that will give it to his daughter to go and buy five dollars of apple then how much is left so that's the accountancy lesson ten dollars to buy five dollars of apple then how much is left so my mind at that time I was maybe um, 20, um, maybe 30 years old or something. I have a light behind me. <laughs> and I froze. $10 minus $5, how much is left? Something strange here. This must be a cone. You know how a cone? I mean, you have to invent something and there must be you had to read through the lines. You had to try to understand what the, the great yoga master is trying to communicate. And then I said, oh, I don't find the answer. The other person also did not find the answer. So Swamiji said, 10 minus 5 equals 5. Go. That's it. Finish my accountancy lesson. So I was uh, thinking for a long time, what is this? Why he had to call me to his place and say 10 minus five equal five? Doesn't make any sense. Because you know, I was 30 years old. I know how to count. <laughs> so I figured out eventually the answer the answer is, he tried to teach me to be simple, not to be complicated in my mind. Yeah, 10 minus 5 equals 5. That's the way how it works. So in spiritual life, or in meditation life, yeah, you also, at the same time I talk to you, you have to tune and try to understand higher wavelengths of talk. But at the same time, you have to be quite practical. Yeah, you have to be very down to earth. Yeah, and and that's spiritual life, down to earth. Ten minus five equals five. So my mind is too complicated. Yeah? I have to be more logical and simple. So that is also another teaching lesson of meditation in daily life. Don't make things complicated. Be in the present, don't make things complicated and simplify things. So, Ahimsa, you have to ban. Okay, because it comes from expectation unfulfilled. So it's your expectation that is unfulfilled because it doesn't match with reality. So you have to bend. That's why humility come in. And then, Satya. Ahimsa, Satya. Satya means uh, truth. That is part of meditation in daily life because you that's a condition for you to be able to really meditate and and have peace of mind and not creating more vibration and more distortion, more vritis in your mind. Yeah. So you have to tell the truth. But what truth? Because your mind changes all the time. Yeah. And uh, if you're a two-person quarrel. And Swamiji would say, yeah, the truth is in between both. I mean, the, the two people that quarrel, the truth is in between both. That means person A doesn't know the truth, person B doesn't know the truth. Yeah, none of them are correct. The truth is beyond both. And we always think that we are the one that know, the other person doesn't know. So that is the problem. Okay? So if two people quarrel in the ashram, the director also get punished. I mean, and the way how Swamiji punish people is make them write mantra. They have to write mantra. 
because when they write mantra, their mind vibration would change. And that's a way how <laughs> you, you, if you do something wrong, then you have to write more mantra. So, and the director also had to write mantra. Two people under the director in a, a center or an ashram, quarrel, the director also had to write mantra because two people quarrel. So how does it work? How does it work? Yeah. Why the director has to be involved? Two people quarrel, but the director also will have to be punished. So how does it work? Because the director is the one that makes sure that the vibration of the ashram or the center is high. So if two people quarrel, that means the vibration is low. So he also has to lift his vibration up so he can lift other people's vibration up. You see, so interesting, isn't it? Not? So the truth is in between both. That means we have to, um, we have to know that we don't know. Yeah? People always think that they hold the truth, but they don't know, you see? so much a possibility of interpretation of any word or any situation yeah so and this is a world of maya you don't forget maya means things are changing and the world of energy and things are changing and compared to the truth then that it doesn't change everything else change so you don't know the truth. Why? Because you're not a saint. You're not a realized person yet. You're not an enlightened person yet. You still function out of your emotion. You still function out of your desires. You know, you don't have the discipline yet. You don't have the purity yet. How can you know the truth? You don't know the truth. So how do we work with that? So we have to be sincere. Yeah. So in daily life, you are expected to be sincere, honest and sincere, that's all. You are honest and sincere and, um, and that's good enough. You, cannot, you don't have to be perfect, but you are sincere. And then tomorrow, you know better, then you can change because you know better you know, the way how you see things can be different tomorrow. It's not the same as you do it today. So it's not like you are changing, except you are adjusting and you are sincere. So your tomorrow and today will be different. Okay? Because you don't hold the truth. You are trying. And then you, you are learning in the, on the way. Okay, so that's it. That's that's the the guidelines of truthfulness. Yeah, don't try to um, just try to be sincere and honest, and don't think that you hold the truth. Nobody holds the truth. Okay, but the truth is within you. But but we have the impurity, so therefore, the truth cannot be revealed yet okay so the, the number three guidelines is uh, what is it as they are in non stealing as they are means non stealing that means don't take something that doesn't belong to you as much as you can try to be honest and don't take something that doesn't belong to you Okay, Asteya and then Brahmacharya. Brahmacharya is try to be observing, uh, try to be aware of your instinct or your sensual propensity, sexual propensity, so that you can learn how to transform these energies into higher energy so that you are not only function out of your low mind your instinctive mind, but you function as a, a, 
a self-controlled human being and or a person that have that are capable to transcend these um, these uh, tendencies, instinctive tendencies. So you need to start with awareness. So in daily life, you have to start with the awareness of your energies, okay? And you have to be able to observe your energy. So we say to our, our teachers, our yoga teachers, that they need to keep, um, you know, pure thoughts when they teach yoga class. Because it's very easy to fall, right? Because of the tendency of the mind. If you see your, in the yoga class, people are lying there. Some people are really not really dressed properly. And then you start to think of their, you know, the shape of their butts or their, or their I'm sorry, their breasts. And then you start to think of their body and, you know, with a kind of, a, you know, impure kind of thinking, you are already breaching the brahmacharya. Brahmacharya is chastity or pure purity in thinking. And to, to transform this, purity, this impurity to purity, it takes a long, long time yeah, because the main thing is to you have to you have to transform your vibratory wavelength. Okay, what is vibratory wavelength? Is the level of energy. The thoughts means level of energy. Okay, so when your level of energy is low, then you have more you know uh, sensual thoughts, sexual thoughts. You function on that level. So when your level of energy is high. Yeah, then you you don't have this kind of desire because it has the energy has been transformed yeah, into higher wavelength of, of energy. So then, um, you know, if you practice karma yoga, bhakti yoga, pure devotion, concentration, meditation, and uh, you know, uh, detachment then most likely your vibration will be pure, purer and higher Then most likely you have transformed this energy into something that is uh, higher and lifting you up and lifting other people up. So that is the guidelines in daily life to keep yourself um, as much as possible, uh, chase in mind. So try not to, um, you know, watch uh, TV and, uh, you know, sometimes it's uh, very difficult now. You are watching some news and they have some ads in between of something and then flashing image of, of you know, of people not really dressed properly and uh, and so it's it's all rampant around us the lustful energy desire energy sexual energy intoxication so that is um very uh, very much around us so it's very difficult to keep the thought pure but you still in daily life you need to still try to uh be more uh, protect your mind and be more conservative, you know, in, in the way how you think or who you communicate with. It's called Brahmacharya. Brahmacharya means the road to Brahman. Yeah? It's not a simple, Brahmacharya is the road, road to Brahman. I mean, if you are able to control your sexual energy, you are on the road to Brahman, the road to the truth. That's what it means. Okay. So it's not just a, a celibacy, you know, but it's controlling and sublimating or transformation of that energy that create a lot of desire, that create a lot of uh, uh, distractions in the mind. 
and uh, create a lot of um, um, uh, uh, problems. Yeah? So you have to transform this energy and lift them up into uh, a spiritual thoughts. Okay? So that's in daily life. So when you, you walk in the street and you see, I'm in LA, I just uh, drove one shop right with Swami Shiva Shankari Ananda yesterday. And I saw this big bullboard. In LA, they have the big bullboard. And they have this new movie called uh, something, The New War or something. Yeah. And then you look at people's face in that, you know, and the weapon that they hold and the big, huge billboard. that it's uh, in short 15 minutes drive, you see this repeated billboard. It's stuck to your mind. You see? Why I care about this uh, this new war and all these people with big, huge weapon and all this, you know, it's stuck to your mind. So when you are in the street and then you have this influence on your thoughts of sexual thoughts, violent thoughts, yeah, you need to be aware of that and you need to protect your mind. You see? I'm not a completely open or, you know, or, or naive, and yet that bull, bull born on a 15 minutes drive stuck in my mind. That image of these people stuck in my mind. You see? Now it would take me some time to clean that thought out. Yeah? Because it's there in the mind, so it creates like some garbage or some junk in your mind that would take the space and the energy of something higher, yeah? And this is, I talk about, you know, the big bull board about violence, but you know, you can have a lot of things about sexuality all over the place. And then, and then you know, you go to, you go to, you fly. Nowadays we don't fly anymore, but when you fly, because that's the only time that I'm exposed myself to other kind of, uh, uh, magazines and then you read the, in the airplane you read the magazine the magazine is thick like this I mean in color full color and what is it about it's all about lipsticks perfumes you know and uh, sports car and you know bathing suit and who knows so uh, your mind will be polluted by this uh, because your mind will be wondering about which color of lipstick <laughs> because it's big full full page color yeah the ashram want to publicize about meditation course we cannot pay even a one eighth of a, a page like this not possible it's too expensive you know, one page of about lipstick would be, who knows, hmm, five to ten thousand dollars a page, or more. And a big magazine like this, full of lipstick and full of perfume, how much it costs? See, so then you can see that so much energy. What I'm saying, so much money, so much life, so much prana, so much energy into the attracting people out of sexuality or out of violence and your mind will be affected so meditation in daily life means you have to pay attention as much as possible keep your mind protected and um, we said about um, uh, non non accumulation and what did I miss? Huh? Non accumulation and none and envy. So that also. It's um, very easy to be envious, isn't it? And that's a problem. 
you know. So to to drive here, we have to rent a car <laughs> because our our car doesn't work. We have about a dozen cars in the <laughs> And the day before we drive here, the car doesn't really start, you know. And we have a whole bunch of cars that is we drive in the. It's a big ashram, you know, and the car doesn't work, so we have to go rent a car. It's a very nice car, you see. So then your mind can think, your mind starts to think, see. Oh, I wish I have a car like this, you know. Why well, have to use all this car that doesn't, that doesn't, it's not nice and doesn't work, yeah. And somebody I met yesterday just go out and buy a car, a new car. Or $65,000 cash. I said, wow, how does it work? This is a different world, you see? But then your mind can change, your mind can switch, and your mind can be envious and say, I wish, I desire yeah, to have a car like this, you see? And that is what I say in daily life. You have to meditate, and then you have to prevent your mind to go into this place because it will be detrimental for your mind because it will create different distractions in your mind and at the same time you try to learn meditation and you try to have peace of mind and you don't get it why too much stuff in the mind okay and it's very easy so that's why the yogis uh, propose to you that you need to practice purification, you need to practice contentment, you need to practice austerity, you need to practice um, uh, uh, st study, self-study, and you need to practice um, self-surrendering more or acceptance of God's will okay that will help you to be calm okay? why because purification means you you know that the light is there within you but the thought is in your mind is impure so you need to do all this you know positive thinking technique and all these things in order to purify your thoughts purify your body, purify your prana, everything is about purification. And then you, you know, practice contentment means you, you wake up in the morning and you already say, you know, I'm so grateful to be alive. Yeah, you are thankful. Your life is about being thankful. It's not about being envious or it's about, it's not about pointing finger or destroying somebody or making sure that you know, they, they will not get what you desire. <laughs> because you desire something and they get what you desire. So therefore you need to destroy them for them not to get what you desire. That's a nice scheme. Okay? But you need to make sure that you are contented with what you have. So your mind doesn't have this, this uh, desirous vibe. And then you, you have to, to study every day, you have to study because you need to put in your mind positive thoughts that doesn't come from magazines or other people gossip on the internet. Yeah, but it comes from scriptures and teachers. And then you you have to self-surrender. Yeah, the, the, these are the basic guidelines of yoga. Self-surrender means you have, doesn't mean that you become stupid and a servant and then and then not thinking. Yeah, self-surrender just means that you have to know that you are not the boss. You have you are not the boss of this world. The world is not going to follow your back and call. Yeah, your desire is not going to be fulfilled. Yeah, things happen the way how it happened. And then you have to learn to accept God's will. Okay? Surrender. So 
Don't wait until big a lesson for us to, us to surrender, like big virus come and attack everybody. <laughs> for us to learn to to accept and to surrender. Yeah, but in daily life we need to learn already to be self-surrendering. Okay, so so these are the yamas and niyamas according to Patanjali Yoga, and then you have to practice asana in daily life. You know, asana is, is known to be yoga, but it's not yoga, it's only one step. So you have to, to do this. When you practice asana, you know that you are moving your prana. Because most of the time your prana gets stuck if you are not moving it. And when it gets stuck, and that's when it becomes negative, negative thoughts. So every day you have to move your prana in a correct manner. So then the flow of energy will be flowing and you'll be fine. Okay. And then uh, you'll be able to also stay still. Asana means stay still uh, so that you can contemplate. So movement, stillness, movement, stillness, relaxation, action. See the whole thing you have to learn to do. And then come uh, pranayama. I mean, how to balance your prana. Um, there are two hemispheres of the brain right and left brain you see how you need to you know be an integrated person where you you think logically but you also feel yeah at the same time and don't allow yourself to be in that situation of conflict where you you feel something and your logic mind go on the other side and then you are pulled in between you know but uh, you need to bring the, the extreme closer and closer and closer and integrate it so that you, you come out with a, a balanced kind of uh, a response. So that is called pranayama. Pranayama is the strongest way how to work on your emotions. So do practice pranayama every day. Make it a daily habit. Yeah to practice pranayama so that you can be a balance because you don't know your situation. You don't know because you live with your mind all your life. So you don't know you are super emotional and you are not logical. Or you don't know that you are super logical and you are not feeling at all. Yeah, you think this is the way how the world is, but it's not the way how the world is. Your life can be different if you know how to balance your energies. And then you can function in the most, uh, uh, you know, more efficiently if you are, if you are not too much this way and not too much that way. Yeah, and it takes long time in order for you to learn. Yeah, that what you think and feel is not the way how the world think and feel. You superimpose the way how you think and feel onto the world, but it's not it. Uh, you will attract to yourself people that think like you or feel like you and then you feel stronger because more people feel like you but that's not necessarily the truth so you need to practice pranayama in daily life you need to practice um, we call withdrawing of the senses or pratyahara pratyahara is when you you turn inward okay so we are all the time turning outward, outward. So that's a problem that create problem to meditation. Turning outward means all the time action and in the world of senses. Yeah, we do actions in the world of senses, thinking that the world of senses is the true world. Yeah, what you see, like now I look out, there's uh, some trees, some blue sky, some house, some bushes and I hear the fan uh, I look at people the color no that's not the real world we think that's the real world but it is not it's very um, it's very limited yeah so this is not the world that will give you the peace of mind so pratyahara means withdrawing withdrawing the senses, have less sensual input 
so that you can live an inner life, so that you can feel now what is living inner life. That just means that you are more in connection with your deeper level of feeling, your deeper level of truth that is revealed in your heart. And uh, if you are too busy externally, too much action or too much senses, you will not be able to connect. Okay? So that is called Pratyahara, withdrawing of the senses. And then concentration is when you are able to uh, be strong, hold one thought that is good thought and be strong and be able to stay no to other to the other kind of promise because your mind is very weak so your mind will run with different promise yeah you are doing something and somebody say oh this and then whoop, you get distracted and again you get distracted so you are not able to be uh, focused and to be able to say no to the distractions and um, so then you cannot really uh, you you are too much in distraction so you cannot really connect with your true self and then you cannot be really peaceful yeah uh, with your mind and the reality surrounding you which is meditation so meditation is when you are able to um swami shivananda say meditation is when you are flowing with the flow of consciousness of god like the like a stream of oil that is being poured from one vessel to another that is continuous flowing so that's what it is so that's what you want we want to be able to flow in the stream of consciousness that is very enlightening that is very peaceful that is very happy and not have this uh, uh, you know stand and stop and choppy world yeah instead of peace of mind will be pieces of mind yeah we gathered our pieces of mind and peace of mind is that that flowing feeling okay so that's called meditation okay that flowing feeling of consciousness and that awareness that is all the time there okay not when things happen the way how you want then energy flow when thing happen the way that you don't expect it's different than what you expect then all of a sudden stop everything stop yeah? big problem it's not like that so the more that you be able to train yourself the more you be able to be flowing in all kind of situation okay you have to use your left brain, your thinking, you have to use your right brain, you have to use your super conscious brain, your intuitive brain. Like I talk about Swamiji, he uses his intuitive brain. Yeah, you have to know that it is accessible to you, that you can do it, that you can use it. And then you have to train yourself to do this. And um, eventually you, um, you are in the state what we call of samadhi that means um, complete flow complete uh, oneness this is the goal the goal is to achieve complete oneness where there is you know nobody is at fault um, you are not separated you are not uh, in uh, duality. Uh, you don't have inner conflict. All your past conflict accumulated in your mind has been resolved. Your mind is pure and calm and you'll be able to reflect who you are. Okay, so it's a lot of practices. I can elaborate every step, you know, at length. But you you have to to learn that you, you we can apply this thing in daily life. Okay. Um, steadiness, asana, 
You know, we take it literally. We think asana means you're going to, going to yoga class. No, it's not like that. Asana is when you are able to keep your mind still, calm, not reactive in a difficult situation. Like in a posture, you see? You're about to fall, balancing posture. You're about to fall because the energy pull you this way and then you want this way and you are uh, you're shaking. But if you are able to be balanced in two difficult poses and you'll be there, steady, that's called asana. So that means that you have difficult feeling about this, difficult feeling about that person or that situation or that sentence somebody say, and you'll be able to hold your poise or your peace in between these pulling, tossing, different kind of thoughts, conflicting thoughts. And that is called holding an asana. Okay? So you have to be able to hold this mental asana, be strong, be firm, and be flexible. Because if you want to hold a posture and you are so rigid, and you really too much wanting to hold and fighting, yeah? let's say you hold a shoulder stand, a head stand, and you hold so strong, then you would tense and then you would fall down. So that's why asana practice train you not to be too rigid. Yeah? And if you don't hold at all, you just collapse, then it also doesn't work. Okay? So you would have to um, be both. Yeah? Be strong and be flexible. So in daily life like this, be strong and be flexible. So yesterday I learned two lessons. See, every day is learning. I'm also learning every day. I'm sharing you. Yesterday there was a, or the day before, there's a family here with some kids. Yeah, I think one is a, must be five years old and one must be nine years old and one uh, maybe 15 years old. Okay, And uh, five years old and nine years old, they don't sit still for a moment. Yeah. And they go and they try and they we are building the deck and they pick up this, uh, you know, this uh, drill, this, uh, this um, electrical drill and they push, push the button. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's very <laughs> dangerous too. Yeah. And they try to push the button and then, you know, if me, I will be upset, you know, because it's a very dangerous tool that I'm trying to play with. And I look at the parents and they are trained because these kids have trained them yeah they are so calm oh kid don't play with that you know you're going to lose some points because they have a scale of points you know put it down son like this then i realized that compared to them the parents they are much more calm and controlled yeah, than me because me, I, I react very strongly. You see, oh my God, they are doing this. And they put it down and they go to pick up another one. <laughs> another dangerous tool over there. And then they jump here and jump there and this and that. Oh my God. And I observe my mind. I say, I cannot live like this. <laughs> so I don't know how they live like this. You know, the parents then I realized how much love they have for the kids to raise the kids daily, you know, like this, Oops. daily, all day long, yeah? And for, for I don't know how many years and not to lose your control, not to lose your mind and always try to teach to the level that what I talked about earlier, the communication level, the tuning into the person level, you know, and the love that is there. It's a lot of training, see? So they are experts. So I bow to them, they are experts. 
their teacher of their kids. And then I realized that I was not. So that's humbling. <laughs> so daily life, you are learning. Yeah. And there was a dog here also. Yeah, Ashram has a, here that we have temporary a dog, one of the staff that is very old and then they cannot walk tumbling, walking, blind, not, not blind, deaf, the dog is deaf, but uh, seeing a little bit and senile, you know, almost uh, dying and then walking around, going in the house and going there and we are in construction field and then uh, the constantly we're afraid of, of the, the dog come and fall into the, the thing and hurt himself and, you know, and um, so I realize when I see my mind reacting to the dog, I realize I have a long way to go. <laughs> because, my God, you know, my mind say, oh, you know, he's going to be hurt. He's going to be this, that. And then, my God, look at him. And so I'm reacting to this. You see? I'm not at peace or, or quiet or poised. Yeah? Because you can feel for the dog and you can feel for, for the dangerous situation that can happen. You know? Yeah. But you know what to do. And, you know, in the middle of the night, I, I woke up and I'm thinking, I, don't, I need to go down and check on the dog. Is, is the dog okay? You know? Because he's he walking around the courtyard, anything can happen. He can, he's blind, he can fall here and fall there. But then I realized, and I said, okay, okay, detach, detach. I teach about detachment, I need to detach. So detach, so sleep, and then we see. And then every, I'm here a few nights. And, you know, and every morning we wake up and say, okay, the dog is okay. <laughs> There's nothing that happened at night, you know. So you imagine yeah, the parents and the owner of the dog and eventually, you know, they have to live with it and you cannot live life worrying all the time. Yeah, not possible. So meditation is that also, is that you have to have faith, you have to understand the karma, you have to do your duty and you have to let go and you have to accept. Yeah, you have to surrender to God's will. You cannot worry all the time. See? So I learned the lesson about children and I learned a lesson about dog. You know, close proximity. I know children. I can give lecture. We have children's yoga camp. You know, I can give lecture about animal, but live close proximity with them and and be able to have self-control and calmness and meditation and trust and faith. This is a lesson to learn. Okay? So, ten more minutes. Okay, so that's meditation in daily life, more or less a little glimpse. You know, it's a combination of karma yoga, uh, attitude, bhakti yoga, attitude, Raja Yoga, which we go a little bit more in detail today, and the understanding that the whole thing is not uh, is a is a play, it's a game, it's not true, it's not real, and you know it tests you, you know how attached you are and how serious you you take yourself. And so the whole thing is there for you all learning, okay, in daily life. Hariyamma kamya jamehe shugam nim pushtivananam Urubhau kamiva bandhanam michu mukshya mamritan Om trayamma kamya jamehe shugam nim pushtivananam Urubhau kamiva bandhanam michu mukshya mamritan 